I'm Jason French and this is Kelly Cox. Welcome to another edition of Curation, where we pair two artists together for a once in a lifetime experience. And what a better place to do it than a pickathon. On this episode, we head to New York City to catch up with Jalen and Gonda on tour. Jalen's gonna be joining us from Liverpool, England, where we have paired him with the talented local chef, John Gorham. So let's head over to Portland's East Bank waterfront neighborhood to go see John at the famous Plaza del Toro, see what he's got planned. Well, the boss man said you better get up cold way down in the belly of the earth below. Hey, John. How's it going? Thanks for having us. Hey, buddy. Hey, John. Hi, I'm, I'm John Gorham, I'm owner of uh, Tor Bravo Inc. and uh, Team Ron Inc. You did a program with the American Culinary Federation. Yeah, yeah, I did that in ooh, the late 80s, early 90s. Like, how has that, well, that, that informed you and like, have you helped that was you a carry full, that through That was a full year? apprenticeship program. Career. So it was, uh, I did an apprenticeship in Bowie Williamsburg. Here at Plaza del Toro, you kind of created this out of, you know, you got a couple restaurants. Yeah, yeah. And this one was really about educating. It was. We were looking what we almost considered to be like a little bit of a lab to push yeah. ourselves and to push new ideas. So when we designed this space, it was an educational space for all of our for all of our chefs. Well, I think this sort of personifies what we want curation to really be about. And so you you've got education, Jalen's got education. He's a he's a mid-Atlantic guy moved to Liverpool yeah. for his you know musical education but so much of his music is influenced by Motown. My, my, my mom was a Motown lady. She so nice. listened to a lot of Motown growing up. We go up. to Spain a lot I know. Obviously Toro Bravo was, was kind of the beginning of uh, you funneling a lot of your inspiration from your trips to Spain. Well I definitely feel like you know traveling is the best education for a chef. Yeah I just completed my 13th trip to Spain. I, I actually got to cook in a gastronomic society there for the first time on that trip. And so I think that's why the the Spanish cuisine elevated itself so far was that it was those educational centers. The biggest influence on me as a, as a kid in cooking was my grandfather. He was a big foodie, kind of a playboy in DC area out all the time. So when I went to visit him, he really would uh, push me to, to, to go out and dine with him and try new things. You know, even as a little kid, he never let me have the kid menu. It was always like, you're going to eat an adult food. You're going to try this stuff with me. So uh, it really, I think that was the person who kind of pushed my palate at a young age. I think education's huge. And uh, one of the things that we did in our company right away was recognize that and, and decided that we were really going to foster people up through their careers. The number one way we felt, we felt education was attained, not just by what we were doing in our own kitchen, was to get out and travel. And so I think that now in our company, we, we probably, within the, all the employees that have worked for us, who currently work with us, we've probably been to Spain about 50 times. I think I was really fortunate with the education that I got is it was an apprenticeship. So I was actually cooking and I was in the trenches. It wasn't this, you know, here's the idea and here's how we're gonna do it in a classroom and then you gotta still go out in the real world. We were learning in a real, real world environment. Uh, when I was 23, I got to go live in Ghana, West Africa. And while I was in Ghana, I realized that a lot of these flavors and techniques I had learned in school and light bulbs went off. I was like, okay, I wanna know what else was contributing to what I, was, I had learned. And what, what you really realize is that Span Spanish food, French, and African is what makes Southern cuisine. You know what you got planned for Picathon? Yeah, I think we're gonna kind of play around with some of the, 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 the Spanish meats, you know, the Southern American flavors. What I do is a, a Spanish meat Southern. So we're gonna, we have a wood yeah. oven we're gonna bring out and uh, roast some peaches and cheese and make some banana puddings and make a big fideo that's kind of Southern flavors and oh. just really get interactive and cook out there while, while he's playing music. Oh, awesome. I'm hungry. That's gonna be great. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being a part of it. We look forward to it. Thank you. We'll yeah. See you soon. And now let's get to know our musical guest. Marilyn-born Jalen Ngonda is now hanging out in Liverpool, England to study at the Institute of Performing Arts. We caught up with Jalen in New York City to discuss his education and how that's influenced his rich Motown sound. And it don't cost a dime Because it don't take much To give a little love Hello, I'm Jalen Ngonda. I've always been a fan of British, the British invasion of the 1960s. The animals, the beetles, the zombies, the stones, all of them. So I was 
already, I already knew about individual cities like Manchester, Liverpool, London. I just went for it. It's like, you know what? Let's go to England. Let's try a new country. And I, you know, the whole thing about healthcare is free, and this is cheaper, that's cheaper. They treat people better over there. It's not as much tension, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, yeah, it looks like they're living good. And I watched the film Cardiophenia for the first time around that summer when I was moving. So I was like, yeah, I'm moving to England. I started singing at 11. I started experimenting with my voice at 11. I started playing the guitar at 13. And then the years after that, like 14, 15, I started learning to play piano and drums. Um, so just throughout my teenage years, I started playing music. It was artists like The Temptations, Mary Wells, Otis Redding, of course, Stevie. Simply by hearing Motown, I immediately was just drawn in and wanted to, um, I just wanted to co copy what they were doing. I wanted to play the guitar, I wanted to make those sounds I was listening to. The city itself has influenced me a lot and still does, uh, from the people to the music, culture. I might be influenced by someone from Pakistan tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. dinner of the curation series. Third dinner. We're alive and we're gonna eat a feast tonight and hear some great music. Yes, we are. Right? Yep. That's the plan? We bring the food. <laughs> we bring some music, I bring the food. So John, when you got involved with this, you said you wanted some soul, you wanted something soulful. From growing up, we listened to a lot of uh, Motown. Yeah. And so I was like really hoping that like, you know, I could get inspired by that. I'm inspired by Motown and the stats, yeah. you know, Chicago soul. This first one's called Easy Street. have you concocted tonight based off of this collaboration between you guys? So tonight I'm going to do a fideo, which is a, pa a paella with uh, noodles instead of rice. And we're going to do uh, ham hocks and collard greens, summer corn, uh, heirloom tomatoes, uh, some marjoram. And uh, we're going to do some kebabs with the Alabama white barbecue sauce. Evening strolls, I watch the sunset. I think, I think uh, you know, one of the things I'm excited about is, uh, you know, John has this ability to just be kind of like a consummate, uh, uh, like, creator. Like, you, you, you don't just, it's not just like you're doing a dish, you create the whole thing. So tonight what's really going to be fun is that he's going to be cooking a fideo um, while people are hanging out listening to your first song. Hopefully if the food works, it'll all come together really well. <laughs> it also go, like, either way. Someone pays attention to the food. Right. Pays attention to the song. Or yeah. maybe you're yeah. gonna be off tonight too. That yeah. could happen. This was amazing. Yeah. What song was it? Okay. I'll under salt yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You don't have to be a soldier to get a little respect. I feel so humbled by. It's 
special experience tonight because we've got uh, an amazing performer, an amazing chef, collaborating and joining forces to give you guys a very unique pick-up-on experience. Without further ado, John Gorham. Everyone. One thing I really reflected on tonight was like my path to Spanish food. And the, the way I found Spanish food was I grew up in the Southeast. Uh, I went to school in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, we, we studied colonial food. And, and, and that food, there were three roots to that food. There was the French, the Africans, and the Spanish. And right after I graduated culinary school, I actually ended up living in Ghana. And all the light bulbs started going off. And I wanted to know more about why that was. And I started studying those three cuisines and just found uh, just a, 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 you know, a connection with Spanish food. So tonight, I'm kind of doing a twist. I'm doing a Spanish fideo with southern ingredients. So we're going to have a, a good play on that. Yes. At the end, my pastry chef at Plaza del Toro made some amazing uh, banana puddings with homemade wafers. <laughs> How's the food? It was good. Going to get the itis in pretty soon, probably. After all that. This next one's called Why I Try. You're in every corner of my eye. I feel your presence day and night. You don't even know. I'm there, never got to show how much I care Why, why, why I hate the fact I love you You're the certain something that's got a good love And that's why I, I try John. It was amazing. I, I felt, I, like felt uh, I felt the time and the place. Yeah, it was, like I said, my mom was really into uh, Motown and, 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 and just a lot of R&B and uh, it just, you, you hit that nerve. You know, it's like, it's so, it's so soulful. When you're at a, a something like Pickathon and you get to go to a dinner like that, it's, it's like, it's a break, it's relaxing and, and everything is one. It's not, when you're out there, it's the music. It's chaos. When I don't you're want to here, it's the food, it's the music, it's your friends, it's the table. Yeah. And, 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 and like you're gonna expect that, and I think that is what makes it so special. Jalen, how did you feel about the food? It was great. Did Enjoyed you it. did you eat it? Yeah. You're vegan. All of it. Yes, I'm hardcore vegan. <laughs> <laughs> save We're the cows, free. save the chicken, save the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I eat them. But um, <laughs> uh, what I liked most about the food was like was the was the kebab. The, Chicken. It's like a mixture of everything in a bowl. So it felt like you know when you go to like you know your family carry out and you get a mixture of everything. Like yeah. The collard greens, the macaroni and cheese ends up being insane with the dish. Yeah. That's what it reminded yeah. me of. So you were happy. Yeah. Good music in the background, which I hope everyone thought was amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It was Pick a Thon 2017. Thank you guys so much. Another night. You're ready for the best friend forever. <laughs> People doing wrong who think they're doing right. You know, I can't stay there. When did love become so hard to find? You know, I can't. I need a change I got to stop this hate somehow Oh, I, I No need to waste your time And it don't cost a dime Because it don't take much To give a little love a little love
pass your way Why don't you give him a smile Maybe you should give it a try About that guy Who's having a hard time Shed a bit of your light We need a change I got to stop this hate somehow Oh how No need to waste your time And it don't cost a dime Because it don't take much To give a little love Give a little love Well, well, I said it don't take much To give a little love Ooh, I said it don't take much To give a little love Thank you.